This is Xiaomi's latest flagship tablet. It's called the Pad Success Pro. Now it's got a large 12.4 inch screen and it's a 3K screen, 144 hertz, peak brightness 900 nits, that is Xiaomi's claim by the way. And we've got six speakers built into this, Dolby Atmos, Dolby Vision 2 with that screen, powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. My configuration has eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. But you can also get one with 12 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of UFS 4.0 storage. Charging, well, it's very quick. 120 watt charging for its built-in 10,000 milliamp hour battery. I'll let you know the battery life, charging time, benchmarks, performance, and pretty much all you need to know about this model here from Xiaomi, their new Pad 6S Pro. So let's take a look at what we get inside the box here with the Pad 6S Pro. So obviously our tablet, I'll just put that aside and there is some paperwork here now because i've got the import version here that i got from giztop by the way uh it's all in chinese but if you've got the global version then that would be in english or other languages 120 watt charger now this is a gantech charger so the size of it is quite good considering that power output and to charge that 10,000 milliamp hour battery well it takes me around about 40 minutes i'll give the the exact times later in this review and then we get our type a to type c cable there is no SIM tray tool because, well, there's no SIM support and there's no micro SD card slot either or 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with this. So we have a really nice tablet here from Xiaomi. I'm so fond of the build of this. It really is top notch quality like Samsung, like Apple quality. And I love the edges around the outside of it. It's very thin. So this is 6.2. 26 millimeters and it weighs 590 grams so it's fairly hefty using this for long periods I do find I tire of holding it I get bored of holding the thing and I wish it had a built-in kickstand uh, but you can get that type cover case for it uh, that I do believe has a, um, a kickstand on it to help that so front facing 32 megapixel camera here I'll talk about the screen in a little bit but let's just look at the build here so the back of it has uh, the pogo port pin connectors there for that keyboard so it's not via bluetooth but via hardware and this camera module if you ask me they should have done something different because it's got the built-in microphone flash there it tells us it's a 50 megapixel AI camera there's our camera and then a two megapixel camera just used for that's a time of flight really so just for your portrait photos they could have really cut back on this I know they're trying to keep with the same design as the Xiaomi 14 series their phones their flagship phones but it just is a little bit over the top and that writing there they could have really sized that down and you get the Xiaomi logo on the back now this is a a nice matte finish to it so this silver bluish kind of silver color looks really good but I don't think we're getting this with the global version unfortunately Great news when it comes to the port because this is USB and it is, yes, USB 3.2. It's uh, Gen 1, so we get the 5 gigabit per second transfers, which is, okay, it's not super fast, but it's still really good speeds. It would be really nice if this was like Thunderbolt or USB 4 kind of spec, right? You'd get 40, but anyway, what we've got is really good considering the price point. Now, it does support video out. I tested this out and it looks really good. 1440p resolution and 60 frames per second, 60 hertz is what it does run at. So it looks fluid enough, but I like the sharpness of it and great to have this option. Now we've got Dolby Atmos with this and also Dolby Vision with the screen and we have six speakers in total, but either side you do get the two speaker ports there and they look good. Now the build quality, very, very good. Again, it just feels really nice. This unibody alloy housing, they do have it, it's really good. And this is our side fingerprint reader. This is capacitive, always on works really well and I'll test that out shortly for you soon. Then you see here along the top we have our metal volume up and down button, microphone here and there's another microphone right here. So there are three microphones in total. This area is for the stylus which does charge wirelessly. Unfortunately I do not have that stylus. Neither do I have the keyboard, but this is the Honor keyboard here for the Pad 9, which is very kind of similar. The design is going to be like this. So you're going to have your keys here to type on. You get reasonable amount of travel. You have that one fixed angle, I believe it is, with the 6S Pro keyboard. And then you can simply just like fold it all up like this, and you'll have that one package to take with you. Of course, it's not fitting properly because that is for the Honor tablet, not specifically for this. But it's just to give you an idea. I'm not trying to mislead people. Now, pricing 
of that keyboard I've seen on Giztop's website is 99 US dollars, which I think is well worth it if you do type a lot. And it's also going to protect your Pad 6S Pro. So our power button has that capacitive always on fingerprint reader. So I'll show you. Tap my finger that I've scanned, it unlocks, and it does this every single time. It is very, very accurate. Do that one more time, you can see. Always works for me, so 10 out of 10 times. Really good fingerprint reader. Pricing off the tablet, well, it's currently at $599 for the 256 gigabyte model, which I've got. Remember, there's no expandability with that storage. So the screen here, fantastic screen, very nice. It's a 3K display. Now, it's not OLED, which uh, was a bit of a surprise to me. I would have assumed that this more kind of like power spec model, more premium model, would have had an OLED screen to go with that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So that's our chipset. I've got eight gigabytes of RAM and it does have that 10,000 milliamp hour battery, which will go for a very long time. I'll talk about that later on. So we've got Hyper OS here from Xiaomi, and it's very, very smooth here. We're looking at 144 hertz. That is the screen refresh rate. Now, the touch sampling rate is 360 hertz, which is um, slightly higher than normal, which is good. And you'll see in here, if I just jump into the display settings, Okay, we've got quite a few options in here. And you can see the bezels that they're not too bad. Now, being an IPS screen, just around the sides here, especially when I angle it, see how it kind of, it has a bit of a shadow to it right on the corners. It dims off a little bit. This is one of those traits of IPS panels, unfortunately, that we cannot avoid. Now, if this was an OLED or an AMOLED screen, there would be 100% uniformed white brightness there and all colors, it would look a little bit better there. Now, screen brightness, let's talk a little bit about that. So we've got the uh, auto brightness, which is working really well. I haven't felt the need to really turn that off, but it does get up to, well, 700 nits is their claim. I measured just over 600, 619 is what I have measured. And in the high brightness mode, it's supposed to get up to 900. I've not been able to measure that, but it still is very bright. Now you do have your color scheme settings here, white balance, all of that can be adjusted, scaling, all very good. Gestures are working great. Now, if you're wondering about the screen to body ratio, well, it's 88.5%. It's not record breaking. It's not bad, but at least we do have the camera here at the top. There's no ugly cutout cutting into our screen space. Uh, and their color gamut, well, according to them, it has, I think it's 100%, or well, there was claiming of DCI-P3, but don't quote me on that because I think it's a little bit uh, less than that, maybe not 100%, but it's very, very good. Now it's got DC dimming and it's 4,096 levels. So it's an excellent screen, touch response, very good. And as you can see now, I'm not doing any magic tricks with my camera or editing to make the blacks look deep. They are actually pretty good for an IPS Panel. Yes, it's very glossy as you can see. You've got a special arrangement with my overhead camera to cut down on those reflections right now, but it's good. The frame around the outside looks nice and very clever of Xiaomi to have these backgrounds where they dull out to black so you don't really notice those bezels until, of course, you open up something uh, like Chrome here and then you can see again those bezels. So at 144 hertz here that I've set it to, very good. You can also adjust that refresh rate through the settings if you want. You can take it down to 90 and it's really good they've given us this option so custom I always force it to 144 but 90 the sweet spot for fluidity battery life thank you Xiaomi for including that hardly any brands do that now and of course this screen is really sharp looking it has 294 ppi resolution is 30 48 by 2032. That is a three by two aspect ratio. So one of the best IPS panel screens I've seen in a tablet to date, and trust me, I've seen a lot. HyperOS, this is what we're running, of course. This is based off Android 14. And yes, I did get that latest update. So I'm updating it. Now, Giztop already de-bloated this for me, so I can't comment on the bloatware, but trust me, when you get it, you're gonna have a lot on board. There's gonna be a lot of these domestic Chinese apps if you get the import version that you have to remove. But once you remove that, you've got a pretty tidy setup and you're not really gonna see any Chinese and things. Notifications have been working. Really, I have not had any problems. We've got a Widevine Security Level 1 cert. That's great. Netflix, Amazon Prime Video in full HD. And look at this with Netflix. It tells me that supports HDR10. And we've got HEVC with that, of course. And Dolby Vision. Yes, Dolby Vision with this panel, full HD, of course. And watching Netflix on it, very, very good. Just looks amazing. 
And you can see camera two, API support, it's level three, the maximum, if you wanted to try something with those cameras, but unlikely really. Uh, there is no hardware GPS built into this, sadly, but there is a compass for some reason. That was working fine, uh, but no hardware GPS. So it could have been a good navigational tool or for car GPS, whatever, maps, ways, but sadly not. So Antutu score here with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, really good, over 1.5 million. And that just tells us that it's very good at gaming. And thermals are good too. Went up just five degrees here. Battery life went down just 3%. And internal storage, UFS 4.0. Not the fastest speeds I have seen, but that is still very, very quick. Look at this. So we're getting over 3,000 with our sequential reads. Although the writes, for some reason, a little bit low. Probably because I've got the 256 gigabyte model here. And the random access is good. So no bottlenecks. Very, very quick. What about throttling? So this is the wildlife extreme test here. And that goes for 20 minutes. And it calculates the best and lowest scores. And you can see it throttled down uh, almost 12% there. So that's actually very good. Really good. Because it's a large tablet. It's got a lot of room there. Very good cooling. It's dissipating that heat and performance is steady. You can see just from the start. So at the three minute mark, it throttles straight away and it just holds that continual same performance. And I can tell you after gaming with Genshin Impact for a long time, it's consistent. So great performance there. It gets up to 31 degrees. That's it. It's amazing. Those temperatures are very, very good. And I can confirm this as well, that gaming, I don't need to break out a thermal probe or anything because it just gets warm to the touch. Battery life with my fixed test, I have to comment that this was set to the maximum refresh rate, so 144 hertz. It took a bit of a toll on the battery, 7 hours and 35 minutes. However, I can confirm that watching Netflix and things that are a lot lighter, one hour of Netflix, I lost 8% battery. So you're looking around 10 to 11 hours if you're doing light kind of tasks. So that is very good. It does have excellent battery life with the large 10,000 milliamp hour battery. So you can see here going for about nine hours too as well. So the battery life, it checks out. Most people should be able to get, I think 10 hours, of course, unless you're gaming. If you game, then it's gonna be about six, five to six hours. So charge time, just ignore the 37 minutes here. In the end, it turned out to be 42 minutes with 120 watt charging. Now there's hardly any tablets out there. This is one of very few, or maybe the only one, with 120 watt charging. So excellent speeds for such a large battery to be able to get up to fully charged at just 42 minutes. And it will sometimes take around 40, 41. So it's about there. So really good charging speeds. The tablet has a built-in accelerometer, various other different sensors like gyro and whatnot. And I can confirm it is all working really well. Now I wanted to quickly show you some PDF files. What's the performance of that? Now you do know that if you could just hold down here, uh, this is Playbook, so I use as my PDF reader. If you hold down, you can get the quick launch for something, and you can see that this performance is very good. Now, it's not going to be as fast as an iPad, unfortunately. It's just not, okay? But it is really good to load things in. It's very little caching, so at normal speeds with a very heavy PDF file like this, it's good, okay? It will not lag or anything, not with this kind of spec. It's very quick, and of course, the screen being so sharp, the 3K resolution, it's excellent to look at, and it doesn't really hurt my eyes at all. And we have the Tuv Rhineland uh, certification for blue light, for anti-flicker, all of that kind of stuff that um, they do talk about. But it's really good to see that it has that. So just getting out of that, and I'll just show you what it looks like in ebook, just very quickly. Okay, ebooks look fantastic as well. Of course, you can reverse the colors here. You can put it into the reading mode as well, which makes it all black and white. And it's a lot kinder on your eyes and just zero flicker too, which is excellent. Now we do have a lot of different things in here, like there's me canvas. If I had the stylus, I could show you that. There's a few options here for tablets. I know a lot of uh, you guys do like to kind of see this. So if you go in here, it'll tell you about that under features for tablets, all right? So wake the screen when returning, you've got detecting your presence, floating windows, I'll show you in just a sec. Uh, workstation, uh, that is just talking about how you can open up the different docs, sort them out. Uh, keyboards for tablets, conference tools. So this is just another little thing here, how you can set it up to have, uh, for example, blurred backgrounds with your conference calls and whatnot. Kids space, parallel windows, 
Uh, there's a few optimizations in there, but I won't go into a lot of depth into Android 14 stuff either because I just don't. Most of you will know all about that. Now the multitasking on this is very good. I've got a split screen at the moment, as you can see, just the ebook there, which is very light. That's not gonna lag things out. And I've got Play Store open. Just wanted to be looking at this and scrolling through and finding a few things. Now I've noticed that if you run the split screen, sometimes the performance of the apps isn't quite on par with what it's running just by itself, which all makes sense, of course, because it is sharing resources. So you can have the floating split screen, you can tap in here and you can change that. So you can make a full screen, floating window, or have it on the other side, okay, like this. And it's just telling me a little bit about that, a little guide of what you can do. So you can run those independently. You can see now I've got my launcher right here. So it's really well optimized for multitasking like this. I do find it really good. So you can launch another application here. I can decide that, no, I want that in a floating window too as well. You can move that floating window over the top. But see how the performance now isn't quite as good as what it was before. Now you could run games as well if they do allow you to. Uh, floating window like Genshin Impact, but this is where Genshin Impact will have an impact on it. Okay, yes, pun intended with that one. Uh, so that's going to be loading up just fine. And then, of course, I could decide that, uh, you know what, I want to run that uh, full screen. So I'm going to go full screen into that. And the floating window still there as well. So this is why it's very good for multitasking this tablet. Genshin Impact does run good, but I noticed that on the absolute top settings here that you do get the occasional stutter, and it's very noticeable when you load up an area for the first time if you keep it in the balanced mode. So they have what's called Game Turbo. You swipe here, okay, and I'll bring that up, and you see that was a little bit laggy. Tap Balanced, and I'm going to put it now into Performance, and this does seem to make it a little bit better. You don't get that option through Battery and Settings, but you have to use the game space when you're in the actual game. And once you do that, performance then is a lot better. It seems to maintain a better GPU clock rate. Things seem to then smooth out a bit. But still, when you go into a new area with Genshin Impact and you look around especially, and you load that area in, you will just see those drop frames and it dips down to 40 frames per second. Like right now, now it's all cached in. It's 59, okay? 59 frames per second, running good, looking really good. It's just, it's not as smooth as I was hoping it was going to be, at least not this game. In audio, we've got the six speakers in total with the four speaker ports of speaker grills either side and impressive speakers in this. Really loud. Uh, there's a nice bit of bass in there too. And it's great for gaming because you feel those vibrations coming through the screen when you're holding it and it adds to the immersion of the game. So I'm going to play a non-copyright uh, sound song right here at 100% volume to give you an idea. And you'll hear that there's plenty of bass. Volume is good. Excellent speakers, and they do have Dolby Atmos with them too. So here's that sample. And moving over to the cameras with the Pad 6S Pro. So front-facing camera, 32 megapixels, and it can shoot 1080p footage, which is very good 1080p footage for a tablet like this. Uh, it's probably looking a little bit washed out the sky at the moment because it's trying to expose my face properly. So that's really what it needs to do anyway. So it's not bad. And if you don't move around too fast, it actually looks good. And it has electronic image stabilization. Let's take a look at the 50 megapixel rear camera now. It has the electronic image stabilization. It can shoot 4K 30, which I'm currently recording in, and even 4K 60. So not bad. The quality here seems all right, not quite as good as Xiaomi's phones, I have noticed, however. But again, I say it, for a tablet, this isn't bad at all. The cameras you do get with our Pad 6S Pro. So all up, I do find this to be a great tablet. It's got a fantastic bright screen, sharp resolution, very fluid, the OS, great multitasking, excellent build quality, very good speakers, and of course that blazing fast charge time. Charging around 40 minutes only for a tablet with a 10,000 milliamp hour battery is fantastic. So what are the downsides then to it? So the obvious ones, no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, no micro SD card support. And if you're a little bit picky like me with screens, I would have preferred still to have seen an OLED panel with this. But saying that, it is a fantastic IPS screen, one of the best I've tested in a tablet. And the other thing that I did notice is optimization with gaming. Genshin Impact performed 
worse than I expected. There were quite a few laggy little stuttery areas and some significant big frame dips when swapping areas when it first cached in. More than I typically see with especially a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Other than that, this tablet gets a thumbs up and hopefully later on I'll have the keyboard and the stylus so I can cover that too. And do subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more Xiaomi tech because I bought myself the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. So I'll have some coverage on that soon, my review and some camera comparisons. Thanks a lot for watching.